Hello, hello, hello. The sun is up and Kaspar Zeppel and the in vitro meat community are lit up in a most beautiful way. And my paintings are lit up in the most beautiful way. Just wanted to capture this. This entire staircase here is full of it already. And eventually the whole house is gonna bust open full of my artwork. <laughs> and I, no one wants to buy it, so it's very sad. I want Jeff Bezos to make this in vitro meat community into 3D prints or just replica casts and uh, out of you know out of a out of a plastic material that is kind of bouncy a little bit that'd be nice and then we can sell this as as an extended in vitro city so for a couple hundred dollars maybe a thousand dollars for for the the replicas so that's uh, for very rich kids to play with. <laughs> yes, but these here, the originals, they cost way more than a thousand dollars, of course, because, and and I don't say this lightly or kind of like in vain or in vanity. I say this because these here, first of all, are infinitely precious. And if anyone would buy it, I would only sell it for a lot of money. I would say a million dollars. <laughs> yes, I'm serious, I'm serious. So, yeah, I would sell this community for a million dollars. Because I have worked on those for many, many, many years. And, and each... Blue God and Dog form over there, the boxes. Each box that I worked on for months. So and also the jars and and these two larger sculptures that I made with Sculpey forming over boxes. And then all the figurines themselves, including this lawn here, which is also um, this is. Play-Doh sculpted over some kind of uh, some kind of cookie box, I think. <laughs> so I forgot now what it was, but some kind of box. And so all of this takes me months and months and months. The Caspar or the Zeppel, they took me about a month, something like this. Each little thing here takes me about a month to make because first of all I have to form it then it dries for like a week or two it takes a long time to dry we have high air moisture then it the sides crack open then I have to fill them in with with a caulking material or paint then I have to let that dry. Then I'm going to paint those. And I don't paint them only in one layer, like a child would, you know. Like when I was a child, I would paint something in one layer and say, done. But <laughs> it is not done, of course. <laughs> that is not done in one paint stroke or something, as you can see clearly. You know, this has they have had many 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 paint layer applications so like real 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 thick thick paint layers paint layer over paint layer over paint layer like 10 paint layers or something and so that takes time and by the time I'm done like over a month has passed for each one of these figurines so they are all made with infinite love, each individual 
So I just wanted to capture this because the light is absolutely brilliant right now this morning. And they are glowing. They are totally glowing. So, okay, I'm going to make a video now about a subject that I just woke up with. And this one is not finished yet. This is my camera stand. I put my camera in there and in there. And this one is not finished. <coughs> this is the transition tunnel. No, it's the ego dissolution funnel. Okay, that that is that is the better term for it. So the ego transitioning from a state of unconsciousness and running away from pain into, here's the error, into falling onto itself, coming back to itself. And that's also what I wanted to talk about. And this painting is only hanging horizontally like this right now because this is that's the only way right now how I can work on it the best also in the sitting position eventually it's gonna go like this but it's gonna go it's gonna go vertically so this one is gonna be standing up and it's gonna be underneath that painting over there so it's a vertical situation yeah this person is falling down onto himself basically so and that's what I want to talk about right now <laughs> okay yeah I'm gonna put this over here <clears throat> I'm gonna sit here because I don't want to lose my train of thought right now it is super bright right now. The sun is shining bright into the greenhouse. As you can see, it's going to be way too bright in the greenhouse. So I'm going to sit over here instead. I always have to adjust to the different light situation. So. <clears throat> No, the camera is very low, but it's okay. I can't worry about this right now. So, yeah, I woke up uh, feeling horrible grief over my life and over many situations that I have experienced and mental states that I have experienced and mistakes I have made. And... When I'm in a state of relaxation as waking up or after eating a large meal or after feeling very nourished and nurtured, often the pain from childhood comes up as a response of missing homeostasis. Okay, I'm going to explain how this works. Homeostasis, only it's a Greek word, it means an equilibrium between the outside and the inside, or this field and that field, or a mathematical equation, you know. Uh, if you deduct something here, you have to deduct it here as well, to, to keep the balance, basically, you know, so... So, and the same happens in biology, you know, and we have the, the, a biological system is always trying to create a state of homeostasis. It is, this is gravity, it's like gravity, it's, it's just the way it manages things, you know. In water, for example, if you put a drop of uh, 
let's say red bead shoes into the ocean the red bead shoes is not going to stay in its clump the way it fell into it. it it very soon disperses into the surrounding h2o and eventually into the entire ocean and so that's always that's a that is a process of homeostasis you know it it equalizes it moves things out and mixes things in and that's how biology works and in psychology it is the same thing it's the same because psychology is bound to biology my psychology is bound to my biology obviously so uh, psychology is sort of like more like a subdivision of biology but it's none of this is really divided it's we're we're only dividing these things we're we're sectioning these kind of subfields and fields <clears throat> we're analyzing we're taking it apart in order to look at it better but we know that all of these things are completely interlinked and and there's also no such thing as a dividing wall in anything so everything transitions over into something else into the other field and, and they are completely interlinked and intermingled <clears throat> but in order to study it one focuses on one particular point of view in order to understand that better in, in order to understand the wider surroundings better and so on <clears throat> so that's all analysis is really about there is no such thing as as, as intermittent separations or walls in anything and if anyone does create a wall that wall is going to be pushed over pretty soon or undermined or sabotaged or whatever you know we see this everywhere in every kind of field and subject and area so <clears throat> in psychology like with my transitioning of the ego from a state of unconsciousness to consciousness that is that is a process that the body is constantly doing like a river that is raging down a stream if there's a rock standing somewhere in the middle you know depends on the strength of the rock but eventually the rock's gonna get pushed over and i see the most the largest things being washed on shore at the ocean so at the beach and sometimes tremendous tree roots from huge sequoias or, or redwood trees or like entire tree root trunks like uh, driftwood that is as large as a car or even semi truck gets washed onto shore and even pushed all the way into the dunes so that's how much power the ocean has and so so a river has very much power a large river of course particularly if it, the river is falling in a steeper decline like this then it will pull anything down power houses and and stuff like that and it's going to be happening because of global warming too so that that's another push that is happening no matter how anyone stands against it in their minds their roofs are gonna get blown off and they wonder why that is happening so but what i want to talk about is we really want to focus on and i get always get sidetracked with so many other things because they all tie into it what i want to focus 
on is this question and that I want to raise for the public as well. Why, <clears throat> why are people accepting authority and why are they accepting a some kind of unanimous social rule or law because it has been put on them by a larger community or by maybe a whole nation or maybe even worldwide consensus. So sometimes there are, I have seen worldwide consensus happening you know, where the whole world sort of, if you interview anyone on the street anywhere in the world, will have a specific opinion that is the same as the other, uh, even across nations and cultures. If they, if they believe in, let me, I'm not talking about something that is rational sense right now. I'm not talking about we're all hungry, of course we are. I'm talking about something that is very, really irrational if you look at it close. Um, they used to spank babies after they were born because out of just plain simple stupidity and ignorance, they thought that would shake up the lungs or something. And they would hold the baby upside down so that's not practiced anymore today in the more compassionate Western societies or social groups. Okay, So they have understood now that this is absolutely an atrocity to do and that it is not necessary for the baby to breathe. The baby breathes automatically on its own. So <clears throat> love is the answer. So, well, there are so many things I can address in this regard. It's just, it's crazy. It's like it's all going through my head at the same time. So, you know, in the same way as they used to treat babies, they, they used to think that horses need to be um, drilled or something, or other animals. And, so the gentle Western societies or the gentle <coughs> Buddhist kind of societies, they know that this is wrong and this is not working. Okay, they know they just they already grew up with gentleness, so they also not just because of dogma but they but they have been already been introduced to, to that gentleness and kindness, so that just also makes natural sense, okay? Particularly if we are introduced to this, to a gentler society, however dogmatic that also may be, or, or however um, it may be based on fad or something or whatever, something other than just the natural kindness, which usually is the case with most of humanity. But those people then, you know, they know that this is how it works because that is like feeding myself. So this is the natural way. Kindness and love is the natural way, however, wherever it comes from, even if it comes from a fad. So we know that it's the natural and kind and best way to do it. And then there are other societies that grew up with beatings and they think that is good. But they, they, they had to split themselves internally in order to think that is good. They had to, had to split themselves off from their inner child in order to think that is good because they would rather adhere to the masses than to than to them being true to their inner child and to their inner being, you know, to that who they are, not just the inner child. The whole body is the inner child. The whole body is the real you, 
the real you, adult or child. The real you is your flesh and your beingness. And even the brain cells, but the but the the mind, the mind's not just in the brain, it's also in the in the whole system. It is a conglomeration of all kinds of things, including hormone releases and certain chemical releases. And so the, the pituitary gland is made to release certain things, even can be made to release certain things out of a, an erotic state, even. <clears throat> this goes very far. How the body is can create chemicals in massive amounts, even, just out of being in a very neurotic, unhealthy mental state. And that's what kind of mental illness is, and this is what neurosis is, and this is what a split split is. Not just a person who has a split personality, not, not, on, not only in terms of dissociative identity disorder, but <clears throat> as Theo Swan also pointed out very, very rightly, is that that each of us has also different personalities in us and they do surface, maybe not in a way that the other personalities are not are more split away from it. It's just different levels of being split away from <clears throat> this or that, this truth or that truth, your inner truth, your body, your health, your needs, certain personalities in you, certain DNA that some people have split themselves consciously away from, certain orientations that people have split themselves away from just in order to be liked by their community. So not just sexual orientation, but any kind of orientation in any kind of way. You know, someone who really likes, just to use a very banal example, someone who likes the color pink, let's say a man, that's a good one, a man likes the color pink. Yeah, it could be a straight man too, right? Who just loves the color pink, so delicious. <clears throat> But he'll never wear the color pink, not even a, a pink tie. Okay, he will never wear it, even though he loves it. So he spits off from it. He denies it in himself. This can be very unconscious. This can be more conscious, and anything in between. <clears throat> it can be. It can be almost completely conscious or totally conscious. But he'll be t too afraid to, he'll say, yeah, I know I like pink, but I can't wear it because, you know, society demands, or he thinks society demands from him, or he thinks they're going to be looking at him funny if he wears anything pink. So <clears throat> I love men who wear pink. I just think this is awesome. And I love men who, who love colors, pink, orange beige, um, yellow, different colors mixed together, funny shaped of glasses and thick frames and big colors and just fun and life embracing, you know, comfortable clothing, and <clears throat> long hair, I like long hair and then so young men with really dense hair, they should have long hair because that's life embracing, I think. It has nothing to do with hippie or with girly or whatever. It looks awesome. So if your hair isn't split like mine, you should let it grow. I'm trying to let my hair grow again a little bit to make it a little bit more, look more feminine. Because that's what it feels like it from the inside for me to let my hair grow until here or something. I don't want really long hair. It's, it's unpractical. But to here 
and have it nice and have I don't want to straighten it I want it in its natural I want my hair to do what it wants to do I mean sometimes it stands up like this but then I just manage it and you're okay I'll spray some water on you and you can just curl over the ear like this a little bit you don't need to stand up like an antenna or something <coughs> but the split makes it worse actually but yeah you know not because society wants me or needs me to or i think or i interpret that society needs me to dress up like kim kardashian and have plastic surgery done and basically deny anything that i am naturally okay I find that that is a very brutal, violent thing to do. That's violence. Plastic surgery is violence. That's all there is to it. Watch the procedure. You know, they always make it look better than it is. You know, in those medical documentary films or, you know, nip tuck documentary films. You see it, and then it's actually made to look like they're sculpting you or re-sculpting you because they are that's a multi-trillion dollar business they want to make money <laughs> yes so they don't want you to be empowered on the inside they want you they they cater they're <clears throat> they're one of the most massive pushers of um, communal neurosis okay they are that's why I make videos to point this out, to bring awareness to this. And I see so many teenage girls, and this is my question. Why do they, why are they so intimidated by like a global consensus? You know, a global consensus, you know, consensus means they agree with one another. Okay? So on something. That could be something very, very irrational and and unhealthy. Okay. Just because more people agree on something doesn't make it rational and healthy automatically. You know, some things are, but there is a number of things that are very un irrational. Like, for example, here, um, okay, this is a good one. Gary Knoll, he is he's a health expert. Gary no doesn't drink alcohol. I don't drink alcohol either. My husband doesn't either. So we've overdone it when we were young and it, we, we saw the, the consequences. We had to learn the hard way. Okay. So hanging out the window, throwing up and um, being miserable, not just the next day, but like all the time being miserable. And in school, thinking about the next party, when can I drown myself in alcohol in order to drown out my pain? But I didn't, wasn't even rationally conscious about this. No, I, I wasn't conscious. I was not, there was no awareness about it. And when there's no awareness, when, when there's just this diffuse, craving coming up and you don't even know why you never even put your mind on it you have no no idea what's going on then it takes over then it really takes on a life on its own and it runs you so if you don't have a plan the neurosis will have a plan for you and it will run you into the ground so become aware become very aware and conscious not just in regards to alcohol and drugs, become very aware that this is very toxic and unhealthy okay. for any stage of life. I lost pieces of my youth because of substance use and alcohol and, and uh, over-counter uh, diet pills that they are no longer over counter now because people have abused those and they contain F. Um, this, um, what's that called? Epinephrine or something. Some kind of some kind of speed metabolic nervous system speed drug. 
that that gets you up like caffeine but even even more so uh, it is totally unhealthy that in combination with alcohol is a disaster absolute disaster so i do not want to relive my life i really don't and it took me a long time to come to grips with what's actually going on yeah i can save you that trauma if you listen to my videos i can really save you that trauma don't fall into this i see so many teenagers so many teenagers that are running straight into the jaw of hell so that are really like in the massive in the trillions walking some walking slow slowly some walking fast and some are speeding into it and i see this movement you know teenagers walking really towards the cliff towards the niagara niagara fall and, and they're like five minutes before midnight or something before the edge and i see this on the internet particularly when i see when i read people's minds because on the internet people say what's on them what's what what's in their brains they don't say it consciously what they don't say it to share it they don't say it. they only say it they spill it out often accidentally because it it's anonymous so they say more they say they reveal more what's on their minds than if you go into a grocery store let's put it that way and <clears throat> that is important okay i'm glad I'm glad they are spilling this out because now I'm I see what the situation is with humanity in general okay I'm part of humanity I'm not putting myself above it or outside of it I'm only all I call myself parahuman because I'm not part of violence that I reject violence <clears throat> but I too have been through all of these stages in my life and I have suffered like hell absolute hell with two suicide attempts and unimaginable grinding depression and pain and so i have a thing or two to say about this okay i've become an expert in suffering and i see that other people you know often you think this person really got it together but look behind the facade and there's the pain just like your pain yeah. don't think that this person who presents herself or himself flawlessly to the public through the media or through social media that they are much more on top of it than you are they are not okay they are suffering they might even be more unconscious than you are. They might have even split themselves even more than you have. So a bum on the street doesn't even have much of an opportunity to use any kind of money-based vehicle, car or clothes or so social uh, parties, uh, spending on neurotic things he doesn't have this opportunity to split himself away it's kind of like he's kind of lucky actually the bum on the street is lucky in the sense that the outside circumstances often unconsciously ridden himself into it but that's another story he sits there and he is he doesn't have any of these neurotic means to escape from himself so he is forced onto himself kind of like in this painting where i fall onto myself through the ego dissolution funnel i fall onto myself I kind of fall into the canopy of a very large amazonian rainforest tree that's the story the, the actual story is i fall out of an airplane and land on top and i'm dead but that's when heaven 
begins and I'm kind of like on top of this canopy hanging lifelessly my soul going into everything the tree and the infinity all around me the blue god but that story is more of a symbolic story of you know what we need to do in our lifetimes while we're alive not <laughs> There's a purpose while we exist, okay, so some people will probably deny that and say we're just here randomly and by chance and it's just, but there's so much more going on than this. And even if we were here only thrown in like dice, you know, as uh, an in an, in the evolutionary process, which of course is the fa is a fa evolution is a fact you know we evolved from other forms gradually very gradually you know develop this type of brain and the human is kind of in a transition right now a transition type of species that isn't functioning at all because of the ego that unfolds itself and throws us off track uh, it throws us into these very escape mechanisms and escape routes. And the more means we have to escape ourselves and our emotional issues, the more unconscious we are, the more split we are, and the, and the less we are in touch with what we, what our bodies really need. Thus, we become split off from what other bodies really need, you know. For example, someone who owns a factory farm, like huge, massive meat plant, um, pig and cow slaughter facility, if you if you have just a glimpse of kindness in you and you look behind the facade of those factory farms and if you look inside and if you see how these pigs and cows are suffering, you cannot eat meat anymore. You cannot be par participating in that life cycle anymore. It's impossible. You cannot do it. It is impossible. You cannot have that on your plate anymore. You, you have to say, no, no, I don't eat these suffering beings, okay? I don't eat any being anymore, any flesh anymore. The flesh of a plant, plant doesn't have a central nervous system. A plant doesn't feel any, that's why I call my community over there, the in vitro meat plant community, because it started out here. Yeah, I will show you. It started out with those type shapes, okay, made out of play dough and stuff and other other clays. So I decided, oh, cause I call it in vitro meat plant because it's I like the name and I also it also looks like this could be something. This could be a future, in the future, a hybrid sort of thing that is growing, you know, in a, in a laboratory or in some kind of, some kind of wonderful greenhouses, mass greenhouses even, you know, or vertical greenhouses that are going to be happening in the future in order to supply food. But, and this could be, this could be a plan that has more proteins, that has more, that has B12, that has all kinds of things that are normally found in meat that comes from a suffering being, okay? So we can avoid the suffering, think we can grow in vitro meat plants. And in vitro meat in general, you know, will be, it will be a cell conglomeration. You know, you can take a biopsy of your ham <laughs> on the side, okay? You can poke a needle in it, you can suck up something, some of that meat, some of the skin and the, and the, 
the epidermis and the, and the fat underneath and all of all the different layers of it and maybe some of the muscle tissue and you can you can spritz this into a test tube and there if it is fed the right solution nutrient solution and kept very very clean then it will grow and it can even grow into something that looks like this so that's why i'm saying you know these are my in vitro meat plants this is how meat can be grown and it's already starting it has started but it has started very slowly and gradually and so it has the nutrients we need and all of this and even if it's in vitro meat we don't want to eat too much of this because an overload of that causes extreme sickness and heart problems and causes and causes these um these heart valves and the and the arteries and and the veins to clog up and to create a sedimentation layer on the inside because the body can't can't transport that away as fast as it comes in so too much of that is never good so i'm a vegan so i want to i'm cleansing my body from all of this and that's why you know if i if i ate more and if i ate any of these animal products i would explode i would become 500 pounds because i like to eat and so just if you like to eat and you stick to vegan food and vegan whole food vegan food you might gain a little bit weight or fluctuate or you can stay balanced i like to be a little bit overweight personally it's also an opposition stand but i feel also better with this but you will you will if you are whole food vegan you will be, become very well very healthy and and you can take b vitamins and it will you will not gain so much weight people gain that much weight like where they become 500 pounds or 400 pounds by eating animal products particularly meats so that's what makes people explode and <clears throat> and it will eventually clog up the system to the point where the heart will stop okay or you have massive heart attack which is uh, i heard very very painful so no uh, i'm not going in that direction definitely but the main reason why i'm for why i'm promoting whole vegan food whole food very important whole food not refined not junk food but whole in its whole natural state natural plant essence but in their natural state and and lots of it raw if possible raw juices real good and a little bit exercise not overly exercising that's not healthy so but going hiking every day for an hour huh? that's that's really the key that's the key to total health and not some not doing something that you really don't want to do but you do it because you want to fit in or something like this that's a split again we want to do something that we naturally want to do you know cleaning my house for example is a natural movement that moves things forward where i feel an accomplishment at the same time it is a wonderful way of moving or dancing or singing or riding bicycle or hiking those are very very good ways to natural body movement natural exercise everything natural and whole you know, that's what i'm for not to go into a gym and and be grinding yourself i've tried this didn't work for me i went to a real expensive gym and in la i had to quit and then they called me up and they say why are you why are you quitting i said because it doesn't make any sense it just i went there for a couple of months and just didn't feel good it didn't feel right. It was so utterly neurotic. I mean, so in insanely neurotic. And 
insanely social dynamic this this coveting grinding self flagellating uh, jealousy uh, bragging it's neurotic it's not whole this is a, those are those are ways of behaving of people that are split away <clears throat> from their natural self so we need to come back to our natural self in order to know even what our bodies need we need to get away from videos that are that have their focus on fitness in terms of fitting in fitness into society no no okay fitness natural wholesome yes fitness going hiking touching a plant a tree feeling one with with the environment with the life around you that's wholeness that's when you're one then you go take that journey within then you become more aware very important what I wanted to say when I walk up is that people those people that are so split away from their own needs and all other bodies needs the pigs in the factory farms there are people that can see the pigs suffering the Peter or humane society footage undercover footage of the suffering of the pigs with the white open eyes with that was the white here on the side the, the terror in their eyes the 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 not knowing what's going to happen next you can read it in their faces pigs are extremely intelligent they're they're almost as intelligent as humans maybe the same people just haven't explored this enough yet so i see it in their faces i see they have extremely high iqs cognitive abilities too and they know what's around the corner they know consequences they know they have a sense of time interval they see their friends going into into the slaughter they hear they have good hearing too they hear the screams from afar they see what's happening it's a holocaust of epic proportions okay the terror on their faces the not knowing what's going to happen next how they're going to be beaten tortured pushed into little gestation crates where they can't even turn around themselves where they get sores on their skin okay. when you have just a small speck of caring and and connection to your own body left if you have that you see that this is unacceptable this cannot be fed anymore with your money that cannot be supported even if a friend gives you that meat that suffering to eat say no i don't want it on thanksgiving i don't want a torture turkey i don't want that i don't want i don't want meat say no to meat in general we have to say no to it so that we can bring that those industry down we can bring it you can bring the industries down you have that much power okay you have that much power just and you some people say oh i alone don't have that much power or i alone can one signature or oh petitions on the internet blah blah i hear all of this from people okay 